Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. And we have an update on the Clayton Eckerd v. Jane Doe paternity harassment scandal here. Jane Doe threatens multiple content creators uh, with lawsuits on Christmas, a cease and desist, a letter to TikTok. We're going to share that all with you guys. A busy Christmas day unboxing litigation, as it were. Follow me on Instagram at dneals for stand-up show updates. I'll be in Huntington Beach on Thursday. Uh, if you want to come in Orange County to a stand-up comedy show, 7 p.m., bring your friends, bring your family, and I'll be live on Patreon at around the 10.30 a.m. hour this morning, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Whatever we don't get to today in the Bachelor world, we'll cover on the afternoon podcast, including engagements and hard launches and all the other uh, doings of a holiday season in Bachelor. So I'm going to discuss a few things going on here. I'll share with you several of the legal documents, you know, I say legal documents, more like legal threats here given by Jane Doe uh, in trying to silence other content creators from talking talking about this lawsuit. But what's really interesting is there is now a movement happening within the community trying to find justice to get more women to speak about this issue, which I fully uh, endorse. Now, I can't uh, or choose not to change my uh, gender here. I'm just a guy who's talking about this along with a litany of other uh, Bachelor-related things from uh, the shape of Dale Moss's toes to whatever the case may be. We're all over the map. Um, but what's interesting is someone said this, as a woman, I expect at best men to police their own in areas getting into sexual politics. I want and expect men to call out bad behavior, harassment, et cetera, in their peers. We need a woman who someone who is in a cis male to pick up this story to get it anywhere. Let me say this. I like Dave. Uh, thank you. And I followed Reality Steve for over a decade, but at least for Steve, he has a past that includes some pretty awful misogyny. Then you have the uh, law guy who I enjoyed in this case, but also made some pretty misogynistic comments. To be honest, I don't know much about Dave's history, but based on who is covering the story right now, it can easily be spun by Jane Doe into some sort of they hate women narrative. It's a good, it's a good, uh, you know, theory that, yeah, this could be spun. There's only men coming after her and all of that. So I fully appreciate anybody who wants to cover this story with any level of compassion or grace that we could muster up within within us. I will say, when you say, I don't know much about Dave's history, I mean, what if I said something, you know what I mean? I, I roll my eyes at that just because I say, well, I'm, 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 I'm doing good now and I'm, and I'm trying to do good now, but I would say my history in this channel especially shows that we are here to support women or men or whoever's on the right side of justice. And, you know, you can look back to how my channel got started with Cassie Randolph's case, where we went hard on Colton Underwood, very hard on Colton Underwood here when no one else was. And I truly mean this. Nobody else, people were talking privately, but like we held that down. And, you know, when someone like Tasha Adams did what I believe was violating the um, sort of um, PPP act where she was, you know, whatever we called her out. So less gender related on my end and try to be as fair as possible. But of course, there's always going to be a slant when you're coming at it from your own identity. And of course, with me, it's a guy. And I understand. I get it. I could look like I'm hating women or whatever here because I'm all out against Jane Doe or in the case of uh, Jane, uh, in the case of Johnny Depp v. Amber Heard. Oh, you're out against Amber Heard and I look like some bad guy. It's like, no, trust me. I'll be the first one to, to you know, if, if, it, if it comes out that Clayton is actually the father and he's been lying through his teeth, we will rain heavens down on him and make sure he doesn't, you know, all that stuff. So, of course... Uh, but either way, I, I do support this. I think it's a good thing here to try to uh, to try to get women who feel like they've got the platform to talk about this. I would never want to pressure anybody to talk about this because everyone's going through their own stuff, and it takes a special type of person to want to have to deal with uh, the legal threats in that on all that that come along. You know, we know there are dozens, if not hundreds, of people behind the scenes trying to find the truth here. And I'll tell you right now, from a content creator's perspective, there is a level of bitterness when other content creators haven't covered this, men or women in the Bachelor world, especially when those content creators criticize Clayton Eckert for the way he handled the situation. Like, go kick rocks. You're not you're not able to stick up for one of your own. Get out of here. You know. So either way, we've got several different people, one including Chuby Von Duby, uh, who is, as far as I know, an anonymous uh, content creator here on YouTube, who's been sharing her thoughts, which come off very, very well. You can feel the compassion for the cause here to say, look, enough is enough. I'm going to play a clip here, but she's um, uh, got long form content. You can go check out if you want to hear another opinion, which I definitely recommend. As a woman who fights for the equality of, you know, the general term woman Good audio. Uh, in intersectionally in every way possible, who is 
a pro-choice advocate and everything, I feel that uh, around the discussion of this topic that there is a very, you know, important voice missing in the conversation and that's a woman. Yes. Uh, As someone who's such an advocate and, you know, like I said earlier, uh, someone who's a feminist and says it with their chest and isn't afraid to say that controversial word despite the eye rolls that it might get i also have um a heart that is very driven by justice and- God, speak that don't we love justice and i understand what she's saying people will weaponize the term feminism right oh you're a feminist you know they use it like the f oh you know what i mean it's like come on uh feminism is about equality it's about putting each other in positions to have equitable chances at success right i mean do i have that right so uh that that's ridiculous but i do say this if more people don't start speaking up about uh, what's going on out here, this will be hijacked by far-right, scary media, the 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 Believe All Women movement, the, this is why you can't believe, you know, that will happen. People will weaponize this story. It's a fact. I don't encourage that. That will happen. They've weaponized far less stories. We have to remember, um, most people, the, the majority of people should be believed because they don't have something to gain from lying. Most people, it's very shame-driven to 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 want to come out when you're the victim of, of something going on here. Uh, in this specific case, uh, we believed, and then we sort of went through the evidence and no longer believe the person here who's accusing Clayton of being the father of her unborn twins. And doing right. And that means that also calling attention to women that hinder our fight for equality um and to negate um all the victims and survivors out there of you know abusers and manipulators and stuff like that so there it is and you know she got 17 minutes here in this video talking about hey we need to call out the people that are getting in the way of progress get them out of the way and let's move forward but that's important to do. So um, there was a TikTok that came and that was made, I believe, from someone's YouTube. I could have this slightly wrong here. That TikTok that was made is not the same person who made the YouTube video. They kind of just shared content, which is part of the internet. When you make something, like when I make this video, someone can make a TikTok of my video with their response. That's fair use. What they can't do is take my video and replay it word for word without any sort of, I don't know, higher level of of communication, higher level of perspective or opinion or reaction. Sometimes the only reaction you need to make is a nonverbal, look at that, you know, uh, like that can that could constitute your, your uh, fair use when it comes to the internet. That's why when we play clips of podcasts, we'll discuss them, but always try to push people to the original content. Even if it's a content creator I don't agree with, it's important to at least uh, promote the source material. That's why I get so angry angry and so annoyed when people will share my content or even reality steves in the reddit they, they, they don't like reality steve on reddit right so they'll say rs instead of reality steve and i understand the shorthand but it's like if he, if you're sharing a spoiler credit with his full effing name you know what i mean people need to find that credit has to be given to the initial source okay that's a different um conversation so here was an email that was written to tiktok by janeth doeth on christmas it says 11 58 a.m let's assume that's east coast time i can't imagine maybe it was west coast time either way uh, here's what she had to say hi i'm writing to formally notify tiktok of explicit violations committed by this account on your platform the aforementioned account has engaged in severe cyberbullying cyber harassment and copyright infringement resulting in flagrant breaches of tiktok's community guidelines and federal law a private video which i own the copyright to was posted exclusively on my personal facebook page depicting the impact of cyberbullying across various online platforms this video was intended for my facebook friends only and was not authorized for redistribution or publication on TikTok or any other platform. However, it has come to my attention that the TikTok account unlawfully obtained and exploited this private video without my consent or authorization. This unauthorized use constitutes a clear violation of my copyright and has resulted in egregious egregious cyberbullying and harassment. The individual behind this account has been identified as so-and-so, which again, uh, this person has denied that it's them. They actually, she actually has the wrong person here, which it doesn't matter, who also has an account with the username. I have corroborated this by comparing the women discussing me in the videos and have established a clear connection. Moreover, she has extended the, this harassment by posting additional videos on their personal account targeting and harassing me further. Uh, 
The actions of these two egregiously co contravene TikTok's community guidelines, specifically prohibiting hate speech, harassment, and... Okay, so it goes on and on. I hereby demand the immediate and irrevocable removal of the TikTok account and all videos containing my copyrighted material. So she's trying to have this account not just remove the video, but have the account canceled. Failure to comply with this demand will prompt me to pursue legal action to protect my intellectual property rights and seek appropriate legal remedies against both TikTok and this lady who is the creator of these accounts. I insist on the issuance of a cease and desist order to prohibit the use, reproduction, and dissemination of the aforementioned copyrighted material. All right, who's got dissemination on their um, bingo card? Dissemination, very similar to the word insemination, something that we suggest didn't happen here. I requ uh, In this case, I request TikTok's legal team to take a decisive action and strict adherence to TikTok's policies and federal law. I trust that TikTok as a responsible platform will prioritize compliance with the law and rectify these severe violations promptly. Please acknowledge receipt of this formal complaint and confirm the immediate removal of the infringing content from TikTok's platform. Should further information or clarification be required, please contact me using the details provided above. Since Sincerely, Janeth Doeth. Now, look, I mean, I don't think the video is down yet, but could you imagine if she was able to weaponize these words to get people's content not just removed, but their platform removed? That would be that'd be like going into someone's home and ripping out their internet and being like, no, no longer are you allowed to uh, participate in these communications. And I hate to say it because Jane Doe did post this Facebook video, which again was there to slam me to cherry pick, uh, you know, um, details about my coverage of her, which nobody who's following the story believes her. I think it was more so her chance to share with her own friends, like some version of the story so she can gain some sort of sympathy. I don't truly know what her motive was. We just know she deleted that video very, very quickly. She then sent this cease and desist um, also on Christmas to the person in question. This communication is my final attempt to contact you, acknowledging your stated preference not to receive further messages. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people online with a stated preference not to receive messages from her. I want to, it's a very Pepe Le Pew. Uh, I want to clarify that my intention in reaching out is to extend an opportunity for resolution through a formal cease and desist aimed at preventing unnecessary legal actions. I want to unequivocally assert that I'm not a public figure by any legal or recognized standards. The Maricopa County Superior Court has previously affirmed my private citizen status in a 2022 case, underscoring the critical need for privacy and protection from unwarranted exposure. First of all, I don't know. I don't know about that case she's talking about. She lists herself as a TEDx speaker, a podcast host, a very popular podcast host. She's also published music on our Spotify. I mean, by all by all accounts, she is public. She's a public person. Um, she wouldn't be private. She leaked a story, all the blah, blah, blah. You're right. She wants her cake and eat it too. She wants to be private for her own protections, but she wants to be public when it comes to smearing others. And by that, I mean leaking the story to the press that made Clayton look like an absolute monster. She wants to be private on her Facebook videos while sharing my private Patreon videos, which by the way, my Patreon videos are more private than her Facebook videos because her Facebook videos were shared to friends, family, and I believe also her public account, whereas mine were shared to a private community. Now, did I have time to send her a cease and desist? For no, no, I'm busy living my life. I'm busy making content and providing for my family and doing my things. I don't have time for that. Um, if she wants to share all of my Patreon videos, I'm not saying I'm giving her the, uh, the permission to do that, but that'll speak to her character, not mine. The following violations arising from your recent actions require immediate rectification. She wants them to rectify this situation. So uh, she says, the unauthorized dissemination of my private email to you and TikTok on Reddit infringes upon my rights to privacy. So she wants to be able to email people and not have them expose the ridiculousness nature of her emails. The highly alarming nature of your accompanying statements, including specific threatening and harassing remarks such as, as for you, go straight to hell is deeply disturbing. Your your comments indicate a clear form of harassment and intimidation, especially considering your threatened remarks on Reddit. I got time today implying an intent to create harassing content against me. So I've got time doesn't necessarily 
mean that she's implying she's got time to harass. She has time to respond to your emails with her own energy whatsoever. You know, saying I've got time, you know, so when she says imply, what she does here is she tries to bend the laws into her perspective. So she says, oh, this, if you have time, if you're not a busy person, you must be harassing me. You can't, you, you can't take that leap legally. Your past videos on YouTube and TikTok advising men on how to avoid individuals like me, despite my complete absence of any criminal history or questionable behavior, is a blatant act of defamation. Furthermore, your intention to create a video mocking me with inappropriate content and false skits, including one where I allegedly ask Clayton if I can suck the tip a little bit, is not only reprehensible, but potentially illegal. Such actions pose severe damage to my reputation and well-being. These actions potentially expose you to legal actions, including but not limited to defamation, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and violation of privacy rights. The threatening and harassing nature of your statements could also constitute intentional infliction of emotional distress, and your unauthorized disclosure of private communications may result in defamation claims. And obviously, you don't have my permission to disseminate this email publicly. Whoops, I guess they did. Therefore, whoops, it made its way over here. Therefore, I demand the immediate removal of content in violation from all platforms, including Reddit, TikTok, YouTube, or any other social media platforms. Failure to comply with these demands will leave me no choice but to pursue legal action for the violation of federal privacy laws and associated damages. All the best. So, imagine if there were 15 content creators all sharing their truth, all sharing legally things and doing all these things. Imagine how hard it would be to fight all of them. Now, because I was one of the only people covering this, she has fought me to the tune of, I don't know, ten to $20,000. I don't know what it's going to, I don't know what the bill's going to come out to. I know it's already been $10,000, right? So uh, the more people that share the truth, the, you know, uh, critical eye and this and that will, will, will make it harder to fight this whether you feel it's frivolous or not so some people have said um this in defense of fair use fair use is an acceptable defense content of others used for critique and criticism that are transformed for creative purposes are legally acceptable um given the steps that have been taken to establish her jane doe as a public figure she really doesn't have a legal basis the following facts though technically accurate are overstated however in combination with verified social media accounts and raya membership i'd say most of the protection offered to private non-public figures has been waived podcaster recording artist ceo tedx speaker uh, published author real estate investor um so anyway yeah she you, you can't you can't have it both ways so this goes to show that the person who made the TikTok is not the person who had the other video. Um, they said, oh, you're the one who used my video. Yep, no problem. I'm just sharing this to show that there was um, several different people here uh, creating the content. Uh, Jane Doe likes to think it's all one person. She's like, oh, this must be Greg Gillespie. It's very hard for her to fathom that multiple people, hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands will want to see this story end swiftly and have her get help. And she has a hard time believing that it's not just an X with an X to grind. Am I Jane? Am I a, you know, a Greg Gillespie's best friend? Can you imagine? I, w I was Greg Gillespie's roommate in college. I was his RA in college and therefore he's paid me under the table to defend. No, come on. I've never met the guy. Seems nice though. Um, Someone said this, maybe it's just me, but her overuse of adverbs positively, absolutely, unequivocally, demonstratively drives me crazy. It's 100% her trying to sound smart, but it does the opposite. The adverbs she's using actually mean something in a legal context, but she's using them in ways that don't actually fit the meaning. Not to mention she needs to have... Okay, so it's, you know, I think... Her I think Jane Doe's adverbs are work or have worked for the most part because people cower. They go, Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know what the hell she's saying. Is she right? She shared this penal code from some court case in Albuquerque. I don't know. And you know, people get a little frightened by that because most people have never been in a legal situation. Um, someone had said this, which was kind of a nice letter. They wrote uh, openly to Jane Doe, knowing she follows the reddits. Dear Jane Doe, as someone who has a close loved one in medical decline and may, may lose them in the next year, please prior, prioritize your time. Your dad should be your focus as is mine, my mom. You will forever live with the guilt of not only what you are doing here, but also that you neglected the family to do this. By this, I mean searching online and fighting with people for the sake of having control of the conversation. Your dad should mean more than any conversation about you. I truly want you to have peace and happiness. You never will in this cycle you are in. We have all told a lie or omitted a truth. Every person has made mistakes. I'm sure the non-truths are becoming a toil Toll and hardship on you. Stress can cause people to do things. I want you to be happy. Someday you may find a man to make you happier, but the happiness must come from within and you will never find it this way. 
If you need a friend to support you, I will be that friend only if you reach within yourself and admit the truth. This is not healthy for you, your family, those you're accusing, and definitely very unhealthy for twin babies. If you don't care about your sister, mom, or dad, you care about the babies. You are making it more and more difficult to believe because it appears you do not care about them. We want the truth to come out, but we do care about your well-being. It is Christmas, and no better time or fear that, or, or time of year than one we are all giving. We will give you love and grace. First step is yours to make. I beg you to take that step. Move, make that move. On Christmas night is a perfect time to make it. You do not want to start the new year this way, nor do we want you to. It's very uh, compassionate. And I know she has a hard time believing this, but I reflect this sentiment is we, we just want it all to end. I mean, honestly, she probably would find more success admitting that she created this whole hoax. I guarantee... I, well, I can't speak for anyone else, but I would say this. I would absolutely, if if the charade is up, I would absolutely call a truce. Never, you know, signs. I would never sue her if she just wants to come clean and end it right now and maybe, you know, help pay for my legal funds, whatever. It's over. I don't know if Clayton or Greg would do the same. I don't know if Clayton would not uh, sue her for defamation, but I think the best case for her is to just admit it all, get help, and maybe with a therapist or maybe with the right medical professionals, you can understand why you did what you did and actually be help for someone else in the future. I would find her story absolutely fascinating, way more than her current podcast would be if she was able to admit what the hell went down, walk everybody through it. I mean, heck, be a part of the Netflix documentary. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, be a part of it. Own it. Sell some merch. You know what I mean? I don't know. Dissemination squad. I don't know. Um, Here's the last thing I'm going to say here, which is very interesting. Advice for those receiving legal threats. Yesterday's Christmas TikTok finasco uh, gave me a sense of how upsetting and intimidating it must be to be at the receiving end of Jane Doe's or anyone's legal threats. Since not everyone has access to legal advice, I thought it would be worth crowdsourcing some advice on how to handle these threats. Folks with legal backgrounds, please weigh in. Disclaimer, I do not have legal training. Remember that JD lurks here, so you might want to be careful about how much you disclose in terms of legal strategy. Decode the word salad. Her emails are incredibly wordy, filled with endless adverbs. Separate the actual legal claims. X is a violation of such and such regulation from the filler. Y is deeply concerning, highly alarming, egregious, abominable, and superbly rehensible. The fact that I ran out of biscuits to go with my cheese board yesterday was deeply concerning, but in legal terms, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, pray for your cheese board. Scrutinize the legal claims. Check the actual wording of the rules, regulations, laws you are being accused of violating. Have they been interpreted correctly? More often than not, JD's interpretation will be a massive reach. And that's why it's been so great to have so many legal experts um, at my side to say, oh, she's claiming something that's just not true. She's She has no grounds here. She has no jurisdiction there. This is not the way. This is missed quote, you know, all these different things. Liaise with the company regulator rather than with JD. Part of JD's MO seems to be to email regulators companies and copy the accused person into her emails to them. A totally unnecessary form of pressuring and intimidating the accused person when she could just f email the company to file a complaint. Liaise with the company regulator rather than arguing with JD. Don't copy her into your response. Don't get sucked into email ping pong with her. It will never end even if you are completely in the right. Uh, Clayton could probably agree with that and I can as well. Don't take the bait. The emails that have surfaced in court documents and elsewhere often seem to be intentionally provocative, both in tone and content. Their outrageousness may be intended to elicit a response that is then used as further evidence of the accused person's perceived wrongdoing. Don't give her that kind of response. Your words will only become cherry-picked quotes used as further evidence of online harassment. Even if it's tempting, stick to the facts and don't make it personal. That's a great. That's great there. Don't make it personal. Um, I don't think I've made it personal other than jokes that I've made, you know, where she's taken those out of context text, which I'm not going to stop making jokes. I think jokes are a great way to cut through the bullshit. Shut down further communication. If you don't wish to receive further communication, state this explicitly. She might ignore your wishes, but if she does, you will have it on record that the content is unwarranted. Keep the receipts. You may need them further down the line. So very good stuff. It's good for folks to be getting educated here on the different processes that go on with this sort of case. It is so unique. It is so rare that there's a community fighting somebody um, like this. Uh, you know, and by fighting, I say sharing facts. This isn't harassment, folks. And I will continue to say we need to uh, lead with grace 
and want a peaceful solution here, a peaceful and a solution that involves no harm, whether it be physical or emotional. Let's get through this. Let's continue to share facts and let's be on the right side of that uh, sunlight as it beams down dark places. Let me know what you guys think. And if there's anything more that comes out of this, we'll continue to share it. Uh, my afternoon podcast will have some more Bachelor content along with all of your entertainment news, Bachelor Rush Hour. And I'll be back on Patreon right after this.